And then the results, of course, nature is very uh, very clever about that. So if we add nitrogen to the ring, the interaction is stronger and more likely to occur. What does it mean? It does mean that the number of structures where the we have a nitrogen or two nitrogens or three nitrogens uh, in some cases in the fennel ring, so that's the pyridine, pyridyl type of uh, rings. In that case, the interaction of gold with that were most likely. So the percentage of structures with pyridyl structures where we have a gold atom and a pyridyl moiety. So that's the way we look for that, to have an idea if this is uh, statistically uh, interesting. So we first look for gold and pyridyl. No inter doesn't matter if they interact. We have to know how many structures <coughs> of are with at least one gold atom and one pyridyl at, uh, ring. So comparing the percentage of structures that we had with gold and aryl rings and gold and pyridyl rings, the number of the percentage of mm, structures where we have gold and pyridyl is higher than the one that with only uh, phenyl rings. So, of course, we had to try the other ones because this is easy to understand. So, when we look for tellurium and tin for that, and we look for the same thing, the interactions are weaker and they are less like to occur. That means the percentage is lower. And that is not very difficult to understand. If we think uh, a little bit of what I've told uh, a minute uh, ago, What's the reason? That is, was pub published in uh, 2009. What is the reason for that, for this to occur? The point is that the gold atom is charged, positively charged. The ion is positively charged. And when we put a nitrogen, at least in the Fennel ring. What we are going, what we are doing is, uh, the negative charge is going up. The, the ring is more negative charge. So if it is more negative charge, or that is the electron density is higher in a pyridine than in a aryl ring. In this case, if we have an interaction with a positive charge moiety, that would be better to attract more electronegative moiety. But if uh, we have as uh, lone pairs, as in tellurium and tin, there will be a little bit more of repelling that. So that's the reason that they are uh, like, le less like to make in pyridine. We have a more repulsion there weaker and less likely to uh, to happen. So that was another thing to think about. And we have looked about aromatic rings. So now I would like to show some kind of chelate rings. Oh, the metal or, uh, aromaticity that it was it it was not very much explored. It was explored by uh, there is a group in Serbia, uh, led by Snezna Saric, which was uh, which started to look in uh, CH chelate uh, interactions. So we also went in in the same in the same uh, line so but 
only related to diethylates. So this kind of uh, aromatic group. So we have a two sulfurs and a, a metal, and we look, uh, the data mining was done on all over this kind of uh, uh, interactions. And this is, as it's saying that, emerging supramolecular synton, a synton is the, uh, what is called in supramolecular chemistry, is the brick that uh, from which the whole crystal is made of. Normally we are used to think a uh, crystal is made of molecules, so well, the, the brick is the molecule. No, the brick is not the molecule, the brick is the association, the, le the least number of molecules that are associated, that are repeated in the crystal, not the molecule. So that is the what is called a synton. So those are uh, CH pi Kellett uh, interactions. So this is a little bit more, the, the, the work is a little bit more difficult to be done because it is as it right here it's manual sorting we have to go one by one and study which is the kind of interaction that we can see and look if there is not another kind of interaction in this crystal and that do uh, that took uh, for months to do that one by one but again we have a very nice kind of of uh, a CH chelate interaction. Uh, here we have here which is con uh, together with a sulfur uh, metal, uh, in this case mercury, sulfur metal also uh, interactions. So you can see, and this is uh, the kind of example that shows that you cannot predict many things. Uh, the compounds are very close related one to the other and they have the same kind of interactions in spite, in spite and that was the, the thing that took our attention that it's not driven by this case that uh, would be driven by hydrogen bonds. It's driven by this kind of interaction. So we, of course, they, they are exactly, they are not the same, but they, they are the same coordination around the, the metal. In spite of that, the type of interaction, so it's different in both uh, crystals. So, like in other uh, uh, cases, you see that if we change the metal having S very small difference differences we have what we call the 1d and 2d uh, that is a uh, sheets of uh, compounds uh, arranged in the uh, in the crystal the the interest the, the most interesting thing is that in this case we have only one example with palladium is the only one example that we found with a 3D uh, arrangement of molecules. It's not very common to find, absolutely very difficult to find. Of course, uh, there is always the question, why? Well, we have uh, the, the simplest answer is chemists didn't found it. They didn't make that compound. The other question, more difficult to answer, is to say, well, perhaps it's not so easy to arrange in 3D this kind of huge molecules with this kind of interactions. We don't have the answer till now. Perhaps in many years, it will people of synthesis would made a lot of these palladium compounds of this type, and there are not a few, but there are still few of them. So this took 
our attention. After that, we start on looking, uh, going back to almost the first slide where we published in 2001 the coordination chemistry of tellurium, the coordination polyedra, and this has a, a lot of different kinds. There are, if you look to, uh, in this uh, in this paper, you'll find around 40 different kind of polyedra around the tellurium atom. So we decided to look closer to the aggregation patterns and again secondary interactions. And normally what we found is the tellurium interacting with the uh, sulfur. That is absolutely common. They are uh, from the same family so they, li they like to be together. Uh, it's not the common in most families, but in this family, they 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 want to stay they want to stay together from time to time. But then we found this kind of interaction that was not described. This is the only example, and that took our attention, of course, immediately. Oh, that's very interesting. We have looked to CH metal aromaticity, but what about? Lone pair uh, aromaticity on on that. So it's on working. It's uh, we were invited to publish. It was submitted uh, recently to advances in organometallic chemistry. So it was submitted, not accepted. So. We are waiting for an answer till now. So what we have seen up to now is that all this, the well, not the common, because they are common, so no news on that. Some, uh, the rare, it's a pi pi stacking, it's a whole different branch of chemistry we are not going to talk about. We have several things on that. A lot on neglected. Uh, and this is uh, just a call for the people that is working uh, with structures, with three-dimensional structures, whatever is the way they are thinking or, or the kind of research, always take into account secondary bonds. The secondary bonds were were defined in 1972. Alcock defined the what is a secondary bond in 1972, but most of the people did not recall of them. Not even, not even now. The emerging time, we have seen the lone pair pi aryl, including heterocycles. But now I want to talk about that. Well, the first time we discussed this point, metal, uh, that carbonyls, metal carbonyls, uh, coordination chemists are experts, they build thousands of them, uh, tens of thousands. Carbonyls is very, uh, very useful to make uh, complex complexes of, of all kinds of metals. This is very well known. 